So here we have uh, the question of, I have photographs, now who are the people? Or what are the people? And where are the people? All right, now, I am a photo retoucher, I'm not a photo identification specialist, but there's some crossovers, so I wanted to share some of these uh, basics. A lot of this information you can get uh, on the internet, but I think that, you know, it, this provides a nice uh, spot to, that's appropriate where we can discuss it and it should make some sense. So, we have the reality of the type of photo, how it was made and reproduced. What clue could this give me to a date? Maybe not a name, but at least a date, a range. It could help me narrow down who it couldn't be. <clears throat> so we have photographs. I call them fancy photographs because to me, the way people are dressed in these pictures is really nice and very fancy. And uh, so just being cute with words. On the syllabus, I do not have carte de visite. Okay? I added this at the last minute because I said, oops, I need this. So this is not on the date, the photo ID basics section. Now, carte de visite, I have, I want to get some. <coughs> Oh, I thought I had took out the right example. <coughs> so many of them. Here. And I want to. Does anyone. Is anyone, any, anyone curious about the card you see? Like, you want to touch it, look at it? Because I got a sleeve I can put it in. Pass it around. Okay. All right. So these were, in, or patented. We got to be careful about invention, saying who invented what. But there is a patent in uh, Paris, France, 1854. And these cartes de visite is translated into English, visiting card. So you visit with your friends, you visit with your family, and you exchange these things. Sometimes they'd be novelties, a lot of times they would be themselves. Okay? These were extremely popular, okay? And you may find some things, especially on the internet, about cardomania. That's how popular people were maniacs about these things. And the, the original carte de visite style was full body portraits. So if you have carte de visite like this, where it's a full body portrait, it could have been the late 1850s, maybe to the early 1900s. It seems they evolved a little bit later on in time where they would do just head shots <coughs> and head and shoulders. But the old original ones, you're definitely talking 1850s, uh, you know, late 1800 range. Also, you can measure it, so about four and a half by two and a half inches. So again, these things did evolve over time. And of course, there's some writing in the back, right where the heads are. What size? What size did you say they were? So you're looking at approximately four inches by two and a half inches. Okay? Yes? So I have a number of these that are postcards from yeah. that time frame, but we just call them postcards. It's like... Well, why? Carte de Visite is just, the, I guess, the... Technical name. The convention, the naming convention for these types of... You know, it's... Let's see if you can hear it. You know, the hard... Back. And sometimes there would be a postal mark place to do things, yeah. Do some of them actually say postcard on the back? Some, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's when it came to America, it evolved. You know. Um, 
And the other one that we talk about a lot is uh, ten times. Now, yes. I have some carpal disease that are um, head to shoulder shots. Yep. Uh, is that a later? Yeah, those will be later. What, not what's later? But I don't know how much later. Because <laughs> they started out that way. So you know that that was probably might not have been early, you know, mid 1850. But I can't. I think these are earlier. <laughs> Maybe. Could be. Could be, but I don't know. When they started, though, that, that's, that was the standard. Um, now, ten types started also in the late 1850s. And ironically, these are not tin. These are iron. They're made of iron. That's what that metal part is. And these lasted up to the 1930s. This is also, this is on your surface. Now, we have a couple, and we've got quite a few here. And a lot of them were small. And like the carpet you see, they would make them and they would cut them out of the board. So they would cut these out. Um, this one in particular, is unique because it's quite large. They usually didn't, they don't go bigger than uh, six and a half by eight and a half inches, about six by eight. Those are really big. This is kind of like a medium, not quite that big. Now, what I mentioned earlier is that these tin types get darker over time. And some tin types like this one were hand colored as well in certain parts. Like they gave his cheeks a little brush here to make him look alive. But I think he looks great. As long as the eyes are in focus, you got a sharp picture. That's the key. You know when you have a really professional photographer when the eyes are sharp and that range in there is crisp. Um, <clears throat> now, the uh, other interesting one is the uh, amber types, and I did not swear I, I saw one this morning. Did someone bring an amber type? No. Okay, maybe not. But we'll get to some examples in a minute. But amber type is interesting because these are what's called cased portraits. And sometimes you'll find an ambrotype, but you'll think it's a negative, a glass negative. But it's not. It's actually part of the ambrotype. Because the ambrotype is made of six parts. You have the glass cover, you have the image on the glass, and you have a dark backing behind it. And sometimes the image will come out on that back. So people say, oh, that's another picture. But it's not. Then you have metal edging, almost like tin, real tin. Then you have a case. So you ever, ever find them in their case, you got a good one. Um, these were used in the mid-1850s. You might even find some nice World War, uh, World War, some Civil War portraits that are cased. That's an ambrotype. Now, daguerreotype invented, uh, patented, invented in uh, France, 1839. So these didn't last as long as the tin or the uh, ambrotypes. You're talking through the mid 1850s. Also small. Also cased. So if you find a cased image, you want to know is this a daguerreotype or an ambrotype? Well, you'll know this is four parts. You have to take it apart. But if you're careful, you can do it. So what, what you found was before the photographs, you had painted portraits, 
Well, this was the real old ones, the real old original case photos. Because everything was paintings. Well, now you have photos. There's a transition. You even find some photos, I was looking at your computer, where you'll see an old picture, and then they painted it, they retouched it. Well, it looks like a really nice painting, but you're not quite sure. Is this charcoal? Is it? But it was based on a photo. So it was like people had photos, but they wanted paintings out of the photo. Right? Kind of like today, people say, oh, can I take a picture and make an oil painting of it? With Photoshop? Yeah, you yeah. yeah, can. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so some other things to keep in mind. And this takes research. Is details. So you're talking, could this be this particular relative, this particular ancestor, when they were older? Or could this be when they were younger? So look at facial characteristics. That can help. Now, of course, as we age, we can gain or lose weight. Okay? Um, Children can also look similar as well. And siblings. If they weren't twins, it, it might be uh, pretty easy. Other things to look out for is the props. The, sometimes the chair, the pedestal. There was a time when people would take pictures of the dead sitting upright. This was, they would prop the person upright, you know, but they were dead. I mean, we look at it now like how hideous, but this was okay. And there were cultures before uh, uh, this place was, was colonized, the Native Americans, where they would keep human trophies, They'd keep relatives, just keep them, <laughs> propped up and stuffed. So they'll never forget their beloved ancestors, okay? So this is not unusual for humans. Um, architecture, okay, if it was outdoors, especially, it's hard to tell in a studio, because those are usually made up, but if it was outdoors, look at that architecture, look, is there a wooden sidewalk, you know, is, what kind of window is that, these are things you might be able to figure out, what type of windows were at certain periods, what type of log cabins, how did they, what did they use to tar it, whatever, uh, signs. You know, printers used to be called um, job, job printing. You would see job printing. You would say, we do job printing. That's from a particular area. You don't see that in modern times. Look out for stuff like that. Now, one of the great uh, resources is a book it's called Uncovering Your Ancestry Through Family Photographs. And I bought a whole bunch of these and, and sold them. Uh, but this is out of print now. And I, there's no plans, as my last conversation with to reprint it, I don't believe. But I'm sure she hears from you. She might do that. But uh, this is an excellent, excellent book. You, you can find it used. You might even have it here at the library. Um, excellent, excellent book. Uncovering. Your ancestry, it's in the syllabus, Uncovering Your Ancestry Through Family Photographs. Maureen Taylor. Anyone know who she is? Yes. Okay, she's a genealogy speaker, so she's a very famous national uh, speaker. And MaureenTaylor.com. And you can even hire her to look at your picture. And she will give you some interesting uh, insight to it. Let's look at some examples of what, what we're talking about. So, Carte de Vici. Now, here's a famous portrait of a famous American, I'm sure you're all familiar, Sojourner Truth. Okay? And she actually made these. She had these made. And every time she would go speak around the country, she would use them to, to make income. So she would sell these. It's this ice, 
I sell the shadow to support the substance. You know? So just like, you know, me, I got my videos and whatever. <laughs> I'm selling my shit to the substance. But uh, I, I thought that was uh, really cool. Um, interestingly, I also wanted to share with you, with the carte de visite, um, usually portraits, paintings, images, photographs, or something for wealthy people. And you could tell they looked wealthy. And you could tell the, people, the few people that had cartoons that they weren't wealthy, you could tell that they weren't by the way they dressed. But something started to happen over time where the people who didn't have so much money and the people that had a lot of money, the different classes, especially in Europe, started to blend the look of the portraits. The portraits started to kind of look the same, the same style, the same look. So it became kind of a balancing out. It wasn't just the rich people and we're the poor people. I've got a question on that. Did yes. you see a lot of the soldiers before they left have those type taken? Yeah. Yeah, did you cart to the seat? No. The tin, For Civil War? Tin types. Tin types? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't see a lot of cart to the seat of those Civil War. I, I've seen some, but mostly it's the tin type and some Ambro types. Okay. Now, here's another tin type. <laughs> so when Abraham Lincoln, 1860, very young looking Abraham Lincoln, right without the beard, uh, that was a tintype on a little uh, campaign medallion. It was a campaign. Imagine if you had that. <laughs> so tintypes were used in all kinds of applications, not just in the front. All right? Now here's ambrotype. So this, this is an ambrotype that's cased. It's got the metal piece. This one, it's got cropped out. But that's an amber type. Look at that. Could it have been a case? What's that? Could it have been? Anything? It could have been a case. Yeah, I, I got this. I forgot where I got this image, but um, I thought it was really nice. But I think it was cropped out in Photoshop. Now the girl types. We were talking about cased, and these are just very old. But here's one of the original daguerreotypes, still life. And then here's a case daguerreotype, view of San Francisco, 1853. <laughs> but it's got all the parts in it. It's got the covering, it's got everything in it. So you might find it so A lot of times people say, I have a daguerreotype, but really it's an ambrotype. Daguerreotypes are harder to find. Now, here's some daguerreotypes in the two famous men, right? So, uh, these are, of course, copies of those images. And of course, you can understand how rare they are to find. So, that's some of the little tips that, I'm going to share, that I shared with you. And I ended that part right on time. Uh, <laughs>